Oh, wow. All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna, I think this is going to be a fun one, dude. How do your headphones sound? Sounds great. The volume? Oh, I'm like the type of person that's like one headphone. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a cool look I've always felt, right? <laughs> one, one can on. It's just my inside. It's like, yeah, I'm working, but I'm also, I'm, I'm plugged into the outside. <laughs> yeah. Uh, song, right? And guess what? It's St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, it's not. It's that was a that was a coincidence, a right. pleasant coincidence. It is. It, it was a nice coincidence, though. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, all right. Without further ado, uh, we have. You want to introduce yourself? Uh, Hi, I'm Sienna, uh, a longtime friend of Hunter's, and by long time, I mean. About a year and a half. Year and a half, two years. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it doesn't matter because uh, because we actually go back without knowing each other because you are now the third representative of the two six nine. Two six nine, baby. Uh, to come on the podcast, um, and that is you know that means everything to me. Uh, it's the roots. You know that's what it's all about. Bringing it two six nine out west. Wow, I love it. Uh, you're not from Kalamazoo. No, close. Pretty close, but it's, you know, two six nine. It's all. It's all. You know, in my head, it's all Kalamazoo, but it's not. No, I it's mean not. like Battle Creek is one of those towns where it's like the city you go to when you want to do anything is Kalamazoo. Yeah. So like in my heart, I'm also like a little bit from Kalamazoo because I was there whenever like I needed something to do. Yeah, which is. Awesome to be like, I gotta go where it's happening. Let me hit up downtown K Zoo, dude. Let's fucking go. Um, when when people, ask, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm just jumping right into this. But when people ask you where you're from, do you say Battle Creek? I I do, and then I immediately say it's halfway between like Detroit and Chicago. Okay, nice. Yeah, that's the same line I use for Kalamazoo. Which right, Battle cool. Creek's more. Wow, Between, geographically, it's more of a midpoint. So I think <laughs> I'm telling a, a larger truth than you are. Oh, I, I agree with you. Um, You know, look, we took a week off of the pod. I took a week off of the podcast last week. I no didn't. episode. You didn't know. I didn't even try. Yeah, I, was, uh, <laughs> I have to say, um, whenever I see it, I yeah. enjoy it. I enjoy nice. it. But it's one of those things I, I didn't. I well, didn't that's, and that's, you know, and that's what it's all about. And that's kind of why that's part of the reason why, because I felt like. It was starting to get, you know, it ebbs and flows, the podcast game. Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes you're in a stretch where you're just like every week you're putting out bangers. And, like, you know, I love all of the guests and I love all of the episodes. But sometimes it feels like, man, we're starting to fall into a bit of a rut here. And that's not necessarily what was happening. Um, but I had to figure out some life stuff, you know. Life right. is crazy. You did that in a week? <laughs> <laughs> I fixed it all. I <laughs> solved my life in a week. No, I didn't. But I did... Uh, I, I said, you know what? I'm gonna put I'm gonna start doing some more pre production. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna schedule out. I so love I started I do it and I know. I know you're the <laughs> you're the god of scheduling and doing production work. Oh yeah. Being yeah. a producer. Tell me more, tell me more. And uh, you're so good at it and it's, I've always admired you for <laughs> it and I've always respected you. Uh, but that's real. But I but I was like, how can I uh, you know, emulate embody Sienna Peterson on the show more? And that's by doing more work beforehand. So uh, you know, I started I sent out my producer text that hey. I'm scheduling the show now. No longer is it just texting, you know, on a whim. Can you come over today and do the show? Mm -hmm. Now it's texting and saying, can you come over at this time a week from now? That's pretty good. Do you good, have a calendar right? going yet? I got a calendar going. Oh, I got an iCal going. Are you Google Cal or iCal? D Google Cal. Google Cal. Or 
Ow. I have a new job. So you're all, you're corporate now. I'm corporate. Wow, you're corporate, and it's an Outlook office. It's it's a Microsoft office. So oh, um, man. I'm using Word, going back to my roots. I just added that new noise. It's the Mac sound. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're going back to your Word roots. Yeah, that's good. Do you feel like um, because I feel every job because I've been what a, a lot of what I did this last week figuring life out was mm -hmm. just applying to you know oh a lot gosh. of jobs yeah. and everything i see is like you got to know the microsoft suite and it's and so do you feel like uh you know it feels like i know how to use microsoft word you know right it's one of those things where it's like if they ever ask me if i have skills on a job application i say yes yeah because I if have they're that. like use word and i'm like uh oh i don't know word i don't know how to use word use google to figure out how to <laughs> yeah, use word that's, that's how i always felt exactly and like i think that's fine. good advice for anybody applying in any job in any industry right just right. lie but, <laughs> i don't want to no. be caught no. on camera yeah, right now that's saying not what to <laughs> just lie <laughs> but i will say it may have that's not what i meant to tee you up about impacted my current employment and it's, and it's not it's, you know don't lie about like who you are as a right. person and, and and as a you know as a worker but like if it's something like knowing how to use microsoft office exactly you could lie about that right yeah i also told my boss that i knew how to play basketball Sick. um and he loved it <laughs> he, Wait. he was like he just talked to me about basketball for okay he said he just liked that damn that's not that's my dream interview that's how i that's the only way i know how to break ground in an interview is to talk about a basketball team yeah no i actually i was talking to him about uh plumber park right next nice. to us i was like yeah like i live right next to plumber park and There's he was like that's there. my daily walk i walk nice. past plumber every day not nice because that's my because then boss. now he's seen now and, and, and if you tell him okay yeah. i was like if you ever see me in plumber shooting hoops no, you didn't. Yeah, I'm right. Really bad. <laughs> I was like, that wasn't me. I should be good. Was, I'm tall. Like, yeah. I, I should be good. I have not. athlete vibes. Yeah. No, well, I, I wouldn't say I have athlete You don't think vibes. so? I'm just tall. Did you play sports? Um, is dance a sport? Yes, I've yes. always said yes. It is, it, but, but it's like not. It's people. not at. It's not on a school team. But it, that's. I mean, that's as I mean, physically demanding as any. My school had a team. Really? You wait. So you went to Battle Creek High, Battle Creek Central. <laughs> No, I went to Harper Creek. You went to Harper Creek. Okay. They did have a dance team. And they had a school. Is that a public school? Is that a private school? It's public. Very, very. I was going to say, I'm trying to, because like I've, I've, I, I don't know. I know Harper Creek somehow. Um, it's really not <laughs> like not known for anything. Ultra memorable, you think? It's, it's pretty like poorly rounded as a school. Damn. So did you, do you have fond memories of it? No. No, you did not like no, that there at no. all. No, Michigan uh, <laughs> changed my life for the best. I was you insufferable in high school, and I totally understand why. In what way? Um, I was just, I was a kid that did everything. Mm -hmm. Like, I was, like, crazy into academics. I went to two high schools. I went to a math and science center and did, uh, like, research okay. um, there at, like, a research institution. And then I went to my, like, public school, and it was, like, a, a very country public school yeah so like there was yeah. cornfields surrounding the school uh -huh. like people were at like a second grade like reading and writing level <laughs> in high school yeah. and it was like our average sat score was like 900 800 yeah. something that was just so low it was like how do you even do this yeah what are we doing here, and then guys? my other school people were like 1400 and above go 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 they were go 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 it's basically crazy. placing kids in exactly okay. so like interesting i had to like fight for my life at my one school and then the other school had come back keep that energy and i was insufferable right like yeah because i was like double oh, their yeah. sat scores everyone's like, and everyone was you. like who are you <laughs> yeah, like well, this what isn't are the you math doing and science yeah and anymore. i was like captain of the dance team i was in the marching <laughs> nice. band i was student council okay. president i was just okay. like that kid where you were like okay, okay. like leave wow anything student council president huh i yes you so yes. did you so you ran for that freshman year and then were you like the freshman class president and then you go all the way up or did you wait? I, I waited till my senior year to wow. do the president thing and I was senior class president. Wow. No, I'm not proud of it. I'm not Why? Proud. Why? Uh, just because it's That's like. cool. No, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, what was I doing? You like, ran I, that campaign like. I'm <laughs> just like needed to be cool and chill and I was neither of those things. Um, yeah. But it did actually land me most likely to be president as my nice. senior support superlative and do you think that's still on the table 
Um, I was honestly looking to win, like most likely to win an Oscar really? or something. Okay, were you doing? Did you want to do movies in high school? Actually, no, I didn't. I was gonna say. Um, but I wanted people to tell me that I should. That you do could. Movies. Exactly. <laughs> I wanted to just have like the right vibe for <laughs> yeah, it. Exactly, and that's what it is. It's mostly vibe. That, that's how they pick. Right. Up yeah. It's like who's actually doing movies it in high school? Yeah. Right. Like, not, a ton, <laughs> right. not a ton. of people. I no. feel like. Um, but this person's aloof so. and mysterious enough that we could picture them as right. a movie star. Right. And in college, like it, it's kind of crazy how many people came up to me and they're like, "You have like a movie face." And I was like, yeah. what do you mean? And they're like, your face just like looks like it would be in a movie. Well, that's interesting because I want to get I want to get to that. That's because that's kind of how we meet, which is essentially the, <laughs> the nexus <laughs> of all of these episodes. Um, but OK, so. But you wanted to but you so but you're not doing but you want what did you want to do in high school? Did, or, I mean, obviously, it's OK if you didn't know, but you wanted to go to Michigan. I actually didn't. OK. Michigan, this safety is school? this is where my insufferability comes yeah, in. Michigan's a safety school. Michigan was a safety yeah, school. Yeah, dude, that's bad. That's cool. I'll put it there. <laughs> it was pretty Let's horrible. Go. I really, really, really wanted to go to Columbia in New okay. York. Got rejected from Columbia. Yeah. But then I got waitlisted at Harvard, waitlisted Damn. at U Chicago, and I was Holy like, wow, shit. it's bleak. It's bleak for me. Yeah. And I um I ended up getting accepted into Johns Hopkins and I was Jeez. interested in orthopedic like surgery yeah. and potentially becoming like a surgeon. Wow. Um, so Johns Hopkins, I was like, that's really cool. That's whatever. where you go so for I, that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I went on the accepted students tour and they had us talk to like the film professor there. And I was like, wait, why is that kind of cooler than all this, this? Like way cooler. Yeah. yeah all Medical stuff. Yeah. And kids there were just so depressed. Like all of the pre-med kids were just like, wow, I, I like don't I'm burnt sleep. Out. I'm yeah. burnt out. <laughs> like I don't have any passion left. And they're like, but like, I figured out, I just have to make it for three more years. And I was like, I really, oh, I just got not. chills. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Saying like in college, like I just need to make it three more years is horrible. Yeah. Cause then what about the rest of your life? Right. <laughs> when, exactly. you, when you're doing what you just did forever. Exactly. Nice. And something horrible happened. Um, I didn't realize cause I was applying to only private schools and then Michigan private schools you can send your sat score like by just like send it by the deadline okay and if they receive it like after it's fine okay public schools it's like they have to receive by the deadline so yes. i had sent my sat scores before the deadline and michigan did not receive my scores uh, so they email me the day that everything was due uh -huh. like at like midnight and they're like sorry we have like rescinded your application because we don't have your scores you don't have your scores Okay. And at Holy this point, shit. I was like, it's looking like Johns Hopkins because I didn't apply to that many schools. Oh, and that's and in New like, Jersey, right? Where's that? It's in Delaware. Baltimore. Oh, oh, Maryland. Okay. And I was like, not, <laughs> not looking to go there. No. Um, and I was just, I was like, oh no. Oh, so I call my so high scary. school counselor yeah. and I'm like, my scores didn't get there in time. And she's like, no. Like they called me and asked me for you. They wanted you to apply because right. I had received this thing called like the Hale Scholarship, which is for like lower income kids who are like the top in the state. Yeah, in state kids. Um, That's their. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like basically like they recruit like I think it's like between like 100 and 500 like in state kids. And they're just like, you have the scholarship like come yeah. to Michigan. Um, so she calls the scholarship office and she's like, you gave her like a full ride to Michigan essentially right. before she got in. And now just because her scores were late, you're like not going to accept her on what was almost certainly a clerical error. I'm sure. Right. It was probably like, right. Like, like I had sent it like three days surely, before they were yeah, due. Like right. it was one of those things where it's like, it, and it's why couldn't like, they immediately email? It, and it school? could be an know. email. And like, right. Michigan, like they're still using fax machines for this stuff, you know, like they're, they're exactly. doing completely ridiculous shit. Right. So in what world was I to know that like the scores wouldn't arrive in time? There was a processing Horrible. time of four days or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. And I had accepted. I was like, I'm going to Johns Hopkins. Like, I'm just going to need to make it through these next four years. I was already thinking. Oh, that. you're. Oh, God. You're rationalizing the next stage of your life. Exactly. Not where you and I was be. like, I have no choice. But like sometimes no choice is easier. So I was just I was like, OK, whatever. I'm fine yeah. with it. And then the Michigan office of enrollment was like, we'll make an exception. Wow. Damn. They saw, they saw you were the one. The, I guess. You were Lisa on so. Al-Gaib, dude. I know. <laughs> literally, I was so, so thankful yeah. that they like considered That's my application. It was huge. And it, 
it obviously has changed my life so yeah. much. I wouldn't be sitting here today. Right. Oh my God. It. Thank you to whoever that was in the enrollment office. Exactly. You changed my life. So, so shout out to you. Dude, damn. Okay. So that's awesome. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, we got, we got, this is going to be a fun episode. I really hope. I hope you like what I have planned. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm more <laughs> scared than you because if you don't like it, you can just be like, I'm not really, it's, I don't really care for this. And then that's fine, mm-hmm. but but it, I will be upset. I mean, I won't I won't be like upset, but I'll be like sad that I let you down. But anyways, I'm not. Right. You know, no, it's gonna be good. I'm clearly going insane over nothing. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't want to. I want to make sure the pacing of this episode is absolutely perfect, down to the minute. Uh, <laughs> so you go to Michigan. Mm-hmm. You got this. This everything works out somehow. I'm sure that was a fucking. <sighs> Yes. So you enjoy your last summer then? It's like now that's a little easier. I don't even remember that who does? summer, to be Never honest. Mind. To yeah, be honest, what happens? Fuck like, it. who does that? Like, fuck it. No, I and was so no one in high school. <laughs> you were a My nobody? life began in college. <laughs> I owe the University of Michigan everything. I don't, I don't, I mean, go blue. Yeah, hell yeah. But I don't know. It sounds like you were, you were pretty cool. I mean, anyways, yeah. we'll, we'll move off right. of high school. You get to Ann Arbor. Mm-hmm. And where are you living? I, I, Bates. It's fine. Yeah, it was okay. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, that's that's another one to suck to read. Like, I gotta go live on North Campus. For those of you that are unfamiliar, there's North Campus, which is over a bridge and like a bus ride away from where everything else is happening, pretty much, unless you're an engineering student. So that's where so that's where you lived. But it's yeah. kind of nice. It's kind of a communal feel in there, right? It's nice. There was a lot of nature. I saw quite a few raccoons, <laughs> some skunks. <laughs> A lot of vermin. Um, yeah, you saw a lot of dirty rats. I did. There were bats too. Up there. Wow. Um, so it was, it was <laughs> kind of cool. excited by that. I don't know. I liked bats it. Bats are kind of fun. It was like, yeah, it was serene, and I got to like leave campus yeah. after all my classes were done. Nice. It's so a bit I, of a decompress. Yeah, I could, like, exactly. I think that's kind of nice. And what classes are you taking at this point, freshman year? You come in off of a was it a successful student president campaign? Did you have a good? Did you pass? It the, was a good run. I mean, you fulfilled on your promises. They voted for me again at the end of the year when wow. the superlatives came up. Yeah, right. So okay, it's like, so you did a good job. Yeah. But what are you? Are you thinking about? Okay, you said orthopedic surgery. So are you taking? Are you taking like science classes? No. What are you taking? Um, my first semester, I took a class called Vampires and Monsters. Cool. Um, I took creative writing. Cool. I took um. Like, like performances and arts as my first year writing. So we went to like, a uh, like ten fifteen performances, watched them, and then wrote papers about them. That sounds like a fun so class. So honestly, I was kind of like, why would I go into like? Yeah, do, did you did you have a I was trying so hard to get away from right? It. Yeah, did you have a feeling like I'm just doing this because it's what is like considered a good thing to get into? Like, yeah. 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 I think I figured that out. Like, I liked math and science. And you were good at it, I knew clearly. That, yes. And I was like, well, why shouldn't I play to my strengths? Yeah. Um, but then, like, I just was more interested going through the course guide and all of the, these crazy, wacky courses um, that they offered. So I picked the crazy ones. And I was like, wow, like, I kind of love this. And that's when I started thinking about, like, all of these more, like, out there majors that you can creative with <laughs> i don't know if the mic picked that up or not um i hope it did it <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry continue <laughs> right um yeah. so i i started looking into him a little bit more and i took an intro film class loved it nice. i was all into that theory i was writing those papers wow, you, i like hey, that clicked for i you. did nice. like it clicked and i was just like okay i'm like i am kind of more like by the book like very logistical whatever and then producing kind of just fell into place almost instantly like i really just liked coordinating things for sets and doing things um on on sets and i I just and so you started doing that like as an underclassman because it like it's Mm -hmm. shocking to me like i'm surprised that it took us so long to meet do you know what I mean? Right. I think we were honestly just on other sides know, of the we major. Were. There, there are just like people who are like fun and just doing things that are fun and exciting. <laughs> and then there's people who are doing things that are like 
making yeah. six thousand dollar advertisements yeah, right. <laughs> for the well, school. Yeah, and doing it's actual just like, professional career it's building just like, stuff. Yeah, more. I was more advertising. I will say. Okay. I, th- I thought I was going to go into commercials forever because okay. I was the president of Michigan's advertising club. Interesting. For quite a few years. Okay, I think um, I did know that. I think I heard that at one point. That's cool. Yes, it was very cool. I honestly loved it. I, I if someone was like, you can't do film, like. For the rest of your life, you're you're done right now. Of like the I get Hollywood blacklisted. industry, yeah, <laughs> because of this podcast. I, I honestly <laughs> might because I do have an NDA and I do not know. We're not gonna violate the NDA. I loved probably. I I love to like toe the line. Yeah, well, that's fun. It is fun because but you gotta talk like, about the cool stuff you're doing. Exactly. I'm yeah. like I work with so many cool people now. So yeah. Back to my point. Um. So I ended up. Yeah, like falling into this like advertising side of film and I was doing like commercials and that type of stuff mostly until like the end of my junior year, senior year, which is like closer to when we met. So when do you get involved with the filmic people? I get into filmic my junior year. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So then, yeah, that covers we're we're just in separate circles making Mm -hmm. things. Uh, I'm making sketches about farting or whatever and you're, <laughs> exactly. and you're compiling you know real stuff to put on a real real stuff but it's like so is like sketches about farting you know i you know i I like to agree with you because when i look at my reel as it is now mm-hmm. it's a lot of crazy bullshit it's a lot of just ridiculous bullshit exactly. but also it's kind of fun it's like you know, I like to think at some point somebody is going to look at that reel and get enough of a laugh out of it to be like, we'll give the kid a shot. Anyways, senior year, uh, I get brought on to Imagination. We're not going to spend all the time talking about Imag because we've done it on this show a lot. It. But we have not talked about specifically. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, so they make me a producer out of nowhere. Right. I've done I've the, everything else that I've tried to produce as a student filmmaker before that has crashed and burned spectacularly. <laughs> you're very, you're very the funny, ground. Hunter. <laughs> One of the funniest people I know. <laughs> Thank you. I would be lying if I said you have the natural skill set <laughs> to that, be a producer. Like, yeah, would incline you to yes. be like a good exactly producer. Like, you're a writer, you're a creative. Like, yeah. I'm the person that's supposed to pull Eurovision. Y- yeah, you. Yeah, yes. Um, but I didn't know this meeting you. Yes, and 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 what's interesting about that is you're absolutely correct. And for for the, when we first met, we inversed our strengths. Yes. You were going out. You were putting yourself out there, being mm-hmm. vulnerable as an actor, and I was trying to, uh, you know, try my hand at managing people. <laughs> <laughs> uh so so i'm uh brought in there's a bunch of new people that come in uh shout out to kevin alfro ortiz uh a great young man a brilliant artist who uh writes this script called uh left behind and uh i eventually am selected to produce this short film script he wrote which is a fun uh like lost in the woods thriller um which is Very cool fun. and so auditions come around and the way that this film club usually does auditions is we get like a room in the union the michigan union and we spend like two days like a weekend there for like six to eight hours a day and people Mm -hmm. just come in and read for your scripts and we film it but this year uh as a new feature i think from covid we started um uh doing video audition submissions and we did not get a lot of people in person auditioned for our film, but we had much more people audition for it on video. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm going through all of the video auditions, and I come across who's this person, Sienna Peterson, that's that's auditioning for uh, for everything. And at this point, ha- were you working with Ben and Justin at this point on I Need to Be Held? Yes. Okay, so I think at some point. I was, I like mentioned Sienna and they were like, oh, Sienna, Sienna, the go, Sienna, the go. I'm like, all right, cool. We'll fucking, we'll fucking, yeah. All right. And I think not, not that your audition wasn't awesome, but I think it was maybe you and one other person that auditioned for the lead role in Left Behind. What do you remember about <laughs> the auditioning process I for those films? I remember setting up my phone on my laptop screen yeah. and I had all of like the script behind it and i was just scrolling and reading off of the script as i was auditioning yeah and i was like yeah like 
this is good enough. And I kind of yeah. just like sent it for everything just because I was pretty new to acting. Right. And I was just kind of like, uh, like maybe I'll let them see something in me instead of trying to find something in myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's awesome. So I was like, awesome I, process. I, we'll just see. Like I just need to find yeah. my, like my niche in like acting. I still needed to, and I, I didn't know it. And I knew I wasn't going to figure it out. Um, like two hours before the deadline. Right. So I was like, I'll let them decide. We'll sci- decide for, and, well, and I just thought it was, uh, you know, that, that club and, club similar to that can only you know survive based on people doing that being like you know what fuck it i'll audition for everything like right. they're gonna need me in there somewhere so you know we were very grateful to have you uh and it was uh you know that was a fun shoot we we got to act across from will shahab the legendary <laughs> young xp <laughs> uh friend of the show uh <laughs> we got to go that was special for me because we got to shoot it up north um, just in my favorite spot. It you know? was it's my favorite spot now yeah. too. It's gorgeous. Yeah, I wish I had a, a funnier riff to make off it, but I miss it. Yeah, it's it needs to be respected. I don't even <sighs> think we could make a joke. Yeah. Like it's just that beautiful. And honestly, like even though we were there to do work, like the bonding we did up there yeah. in in good old nature, right? Was yeah, man. It There's really made the experience for me. It just, you know, something about, yeah, you said it, being out there with people like that you feel connected to in some way in nature, just, I don't know. I don't know if putting it in perspective is like the right phrase, but like, that's kind of, it just felt like, oh man, this is really cool what we get to do. It it really uh, was. I I didn't know anyone. I know. I I came into this barely having worked with anyone on that set. Yeah. And I like new names, but right. just kind of being like, yeah, I'm going to go stay the night with these people. For, it was a huge for risk. Two nights. Yeah. I was like, it could be the worst two days of my entire yeah. life. Everyone took a huge risk on doing it because exactly m- like very few people did. Like, honestly, it was like me and Jake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the only people that really knew each other were like, well, and, uh, you know, you're driving four hours with strangers to go stay at some fucking weirdo's house. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> I was I was nervous, dude. It was fuck. I was like, fuck. I hope these people think I'm not, you know, weird and crazy. Uh but it was nice, man. And I I would love, you know, my dream is to is to have all of us go back up north at some oh point. Oh my gosh. If we could get this gang in Michigan one summer. God. Anyways. That would be awesome. Uh that was great. That was first semester senior year. I had a lot of I know, you know, it wasn't a perfect shoot. But uh you know, there I thought it was nice, ups. but but that has you know, that's the lesson of <laughs> it's that's that's just film. That's the industry. You that's know? the industry, dude. That is the industry. Uh, and then we get and then you you're in. You were a busy. You were booking left and right. Did you have fucking who was your agent for Emage that fucking year, yeah, dude? Honestly, you were doing projects every other week, I, every week. I, I think it must have to do with what you had said about like two people auditioning. Yeah. I think we split them 50 <laughs> <laughs> 50. You, you, yeah, yeah. Ex- every, and I remember everyone being like, hey, you can't cast Sienna. We already cast Sienna. And they already cast Sienna. And they <laughs> and already cast they Sienna. They were like, oh. There's only so many weekends in March and February. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I think it was in three. Yeah. And how many did you do? Like six, seven? Yeah, we did. We did between six and eight each semester. Um, I, I feel like this was like a six six film semester yeah. because i remember i i did get clowned a little bit for being in th- like half of them yeah you were in a lot and then so then we got to act in excuse me we got to act in uh ann arbor house hunters oh yeah. which is actually i know you were very hungover on that said i should i say yeah. that no I'm, uh, yeah. i drink hey it's college it's college hey, what you like we, we all do and uh you were uh, yeah so it was that that was interesting energy on the set. I felt probably you probably felt similar to how I felt this morning, because that was an early call time. What was that like? I I think it was like eight. <laughs> right, <laughs> you're in a suit. I was in a suit, <laughs> and honestly, I feel like it really informed my character decisions. Though. It did. It was great. It played so well. Like the just residual, just like <laughs> no, exa- <fuck laughs> exactly. Exactly. It felt like. I was like an alcoholic real estate agent. Yeah. Like yeah. I was like on yeah. a bender the night before. I'm just trying to like get these kids get these to sign on this kids in this house. house. <laughs> and then you all were hilarious. Like oh, so well you. characterized. It was insane how 
everyone was like cast in the role that was just them. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was a really cool set. Shout out to uh, Jesse and Morgan and Adela. Um, that was just, I mean, it was fun. Did you, despite being on the verge of, of physical illness, that was kind of fun, right? No, it was really fun. It was really fun. And honestly, like a different one I had done um, for Imagine, I was hungover for that one as well. And <laughs> I actually threw up on set. <laughs> in, the, in the bathroom? In the bathroom. Well, it was in Ross. <laughs> Did you ruin a take? Oh, that's cool. That's it, cool. it was actually not that cool because like <laughs> I was on my hands and knees in the bathroom of the Ross School of Business throwing up. And then I ran back in. <laughs> And then Jacob Kernish, shout out to him. He's doing great things. Um, was like, okay, putting like white powder on people's noses. And he was like, <laughs> you just snored lines of coke in the bathroom. You're coming in. You're running this frat recruitment. Like, yeah. you're you're like a boss. And I was yeah. like, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I don't feel good. I was like, I think I can do one take yeah. <laughs> before I have to run back to the bathroom. Let's make sure sound is tight on this one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It turned out great, um, and you could definitely tell. Like, it's funny because we filmed the rest of it on a different day. You can tell. Like, I just look physically ill in the yeah. one section yeah, of the yeah. film. You so I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry about your continuity, <laughs> <laughs> Jacob. But oh, dude, he'll get over it. Yeah. So, I, unfortunately, the Madge, I don't think I put my best foot forward. But I, for House Hunters, I think it worked. Yes, I do think it played well. I liked House Hunters because I some it must have happened very early on. Uh, for some must have been during freshman year in a sketch I was in I, I began getting typecast as uh <laughs> someone that like cries at the end like the end of like four or five sketches that I was in was just like it ends on Hunter sobbing for a long day <laughs> I've seen long quite take. a few yeah. of them I think and uh that's fine you know I'm happy to be the butt of the joke mm -hmm. I was like you know I'll do all of it I'll be the court jester but that was uh you know I got to pretend to date you know, two women way out of my league in House Hunters <laughs> Ann Arbor. That was a nice change of pace. <laughs> I, got, I got to uh, I got to pretend to be in a frat, which is, you know, something that I've always felt I could do but never would. So I got to kind of flex those muscles a little bit. Right, right. And, uh, you know, I liked that set. That was I, a fun I think set. it suited you, being in a frat and dating beautiful women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was funny. Um... Gosh, we're getting we're at the thirty minute mark, which means it's almost game time. Can't. Mm. <laughs> okay, you're scaring me, Hunter. Um. Oh, did you? Is there anything else we want to cover at Michigan? Uh. Honestly, nothing comes to mind. You came to see me do stand up once, which I greatly appreciated. Hilarious. That was when I was like, "Oh man," because I was. Uh, can I be honest with you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was a little intimidated by you for a very long time. As most people are. That's not like news yeah, right. to me. I, I have, you just have really a bit bad RBS. <laughs> <laughs> if that's, that's what you were going to say. A little bit. A I was, little bit. I mean, that's probably part of it. You just, I feel like you have an intensity about you. That's mm -hmm. like, it's, you know, obviously you're very nice and cool, but like there is, I get, I feel like I'm always got to be on best behavior around Sienna. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> I think it might be a compliment. And if it is, like if I can it find is. a compliment. No, there, it is a compliment. You. Um, and I forgot what I was bringing that up to say. Because I can do stand up. Oh, yes. So I was like, uh, I always thought we got along well on set. And then yes. that was very, like, I was just like, oh my God, dude, it, it just meant a lot to me. Thank you for being always being supportive. Honestly, that was very kind. My pleasure because you actually are funny. Like, I go to support my <laughs> friends no matter what. But, yeah. But sometimes but it it's is nice painful. when you go to the talented ones. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, and you were one of them. So wow, rest assured, thank you. Well, I had a good time. I hope you still feel that way uh, as we move forward. Um, I, I've just, you know, this is another fun soundbite I added. Stop doing the podcast. It ain't stopping. Y'all going to get this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's Draymond Green after winning an NBA championship. Uh, and I just think it's funny. So uh, I, I added it to the soundboard. It doesn't have anything to do with what we've got going on. Um, Still completely in the dark. I know. I know. I'm Getting sorry. I'm sorry. Look, uh, um, gosh, I, I don't want you to read it, but I don't want to spoil the surprise. Um, here's what we're going to do. Sorry. Gosh, I should have, uh, I know I was talking about how much pre-production I've been doing. I'm not making myself look great right now, but hey, I think I heard calendar and that's all <laughs> that's I needed all to hear. Need. It's all about the buzzwords. Okay. <sighs> Fuck. Come on, Hunter. Pull through. <laughs> Fuck. Fourth quarter. No pressure. No pressure. 
I think I can still, I think it's still recording. I, I hope it's still, I think it's still recording. Yes, it is. All right. Um, so it is St. Patrick's Day. And it is the start of March Madness. Uh, are you, are you, well, for, are you Irish? <clears throat> um, so I, I did not think so because mm-hmm. my family, like if you trace the lineage, it's not Irish. It's Italian. Um, kind of. Siena sounds Italian to me. Well, it's a city in Italy, but no, yeah, my parents okay. just picked it from a crayon, um, from a Crayola <laughs> box. Sick. But I took a DNA test and a okay. uh, very Irish. So I don't know wow. where it came from, but like wow. it's in there. Someone stuck um, in there. It did. So I'm like, I'm well, like 45% Irish. Nice. Okay. Well, that's, you know, obviously we don't pigeonhole anybody here, but when I was trying to think of fun games to play, I was like, what do we got going on? We got mm-hmm. March Madness. Uh, today is Selection Sunday. It's, you know, Selection Sunday and St. Patrick's Day on the same day. That's pretty big. How can we combine March Madness and uh, St. Patrick's Day and Sienna Peterson? So we're going to play for the first time... Redhead Rampage. Sorry, what's that? Okay, okay, no, there we go. Uh, so what do you what what you are were your like, initial thoughts? You can't read it, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, once I read it, I was kind of like. Oh, it's going to spoil it, but I'm still so It doesn't confused. mean anything yet. Right. This means nothing. Yes. So I'm still like in the dark. <laughs> I'm getting more and more nervous. Okay. So uh, uh, March Madness obviously is an alliteration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so is Redhead Rampage. Okay. Okay. I thought, uh, do you like this Photoshop that I made? I do. <laughs> um, the outlining <laughs> is a little bit. You know, we tried our best. Like it. It's um, homemade. So what I've done is I've gone... oh my god (laughs) so vogue created a a list a few years ago that was the top 60 redheads which a it was it was a crazy list i don't know how they decided the list um it was all over the place it had like like julia roberts was on the list as herself and as characters she played different times and it was also (laughs) unclear it was unclear like what like the the um parameters to qualify because like Mm -hmm. like Dua Lipa and like Halle Bailey were on there it's like I don't think they're redheads but it's like who am I to say you know I'm to Uh, say but I figured Sienna could say if you were not bullied in middle school (laughs) a little chunky ginger kid if you were never like called ginger you probably shouldn't be on Vogue's top 60 redheads right if you you did not fall victim to the (laughs) self park epidemic of like Mm -hmm. of like not having a soul like yeah. that ruined my life. If yeah, that didn't ruin your really. life, you're not a ginger. Is that did that really get to you? As like, I mean, I can see that getting no, to a South kid. No, South Park didn't get to me. What got to me was, was showing no, up the to middle kids. school. That's what I meant. Yeah, and people being like, "Oh, like you're transparent. I can't <laughs> see you. You don't have a soul. Like we're not going to talk to you all day and pretend you're invisible because you're a ghost." <laughs> that like, sucks. It was horrible. That sucks. Middle school was an awful time to be a redhead, especially yeah. in the South Park era. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. That would be tough. Well, um. You know, this is this is going to give us a chance to sort of reverse the script, I love this. so to say. So okay. we're going to the description, the Hunter Davidson Radio Hours Ultimate Tournament to decide who's the champion of the red hair. We've compiled <laughs> 32. I didn't I was going to do 64, mm-hmm. but I thought, we well, God, we'll be here. You know, you got things. You're busy. You got things to do. Yeah. So we kept it to a field of. Th- <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> we kept no, it to a, great. we kept it to a field of 32. And, um, you know. I figured we could just go through this. We'll have some deliberation. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be fun. Maybe it won't be fun. Maybe no, it will be, be. Okay, all right. So, um, and seating was a little tough, you know? I didn't know. Because, right. and, you know, but I figured that's that'll all be part of the fun. So, let's start off with the first matchup. I made Wendy the... I didn't seed everyone specifically because mm-hmm. there's a point, like, you know, between, like, seeds 12 and 28, it's like, I don't know how to put... Ed Sheeran over Lucille Ball. Like, I don't know what we're doing here. But uh, I felt pretty strongly that Wendy was a one seed. You know, yeah. probably the most prominent, I don't know, like, probably the most prominent, just like redheaded 
figure. <laughs> yeah, no, like whenever I wear my hair in braids, everyone's like, everyone's like, windy, 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 and I'm like, yeah, she's done a lot for the Red okay. community. Okay, and w- and you would say pro like mostly like kind of positive. Yeah, like n- I've never been offended by the right people calling me windy. Yeah, okay, like, and and raggedy and, and great fries. Oh, dude, and we got we got there's a Wendy's like right. You know, oh, I Wendy's know, right I know. We've, that street. And I've been <laughs> We've to taken the Wendy's. some trips to Wendy's uh, with the gang. <laughs> it's been good. Uh, Raggedy good. Ann, <coughs> a little mucus in my throat. Sorry, Raggedy Ann. Um, I never had a Raggedy Ann doll in the house mm-hmm. growing up. It was my mother's favorite toy. They loved it in that generation yeah, like it was my mom's favorite as well <laughs> nuts for that fucker. it is yeah, and what is it like it's not a pro- i don't think it's i don't know it's a nice toy i guess but i think it's a little p- scary it cr- gives me the heebie-jeebies a little bit a little, bit. A little you know the button eyes maybe the button eyes you know I, I would hate to throw the word soulless at it because of the <laughs> implications but it might have been where it started <laughs> i wouldn't be shocked so i think we, we move wendy on yeah yeah all right uh next a huge uh, eight nine seed battle. Lindsay Lohan, Scarlett Johansson. Look, Lohan was, I think, the the standard for the early part of our lives. Mm-hmm. And then I remember, you know, right around Iron Man two, when ScarJo came out as Black Widow, it definitely felt like a shift mm-hmm. from Lohan to ScarJo. <laughs> Am I off base right. there? I'm on, You're okay. on base. Okay. I think my struggle with this is that I'm I'm fairly certain that Lindsay Lohan is, is a natural and, and Scarlett Johansson is not. And Scarlett I, Johansson I, is not. After I put Scarlett Johansson on there, I was like, I think she might just be like kind of famous for having the red hair, but not naturally. So you're thinking Lohan. I I just think she's going to have her second coming soon. That and would I be awesome. I might just be saying this because Kristen Chenoweth, um, a lovely client that I've been working with um, for my boss. Yeah. Is gonna be in a Christmas movie with her. Okay, called that's our nice. little secret. It's announced. Like, that's nice. It's not private, but yeah. Um, I, I that's think good. It's I would like to see like a uh, yeah. That's the she. I think she's good. She'll be good at the feel good comeback stuff. Mm-hmm. I would love to see her take a, you know, uh, Brendan Fraser esque like very dramatic career revival second arc here. I think that would be kind of cool. I think she's. Probably just laying low right now with yeah, like the sure. Hallmark type stuff, like very just wholesome, Can't just getting her. that good image back. Yeah. And then I think like once that's built back up, like dive back Take in. Take some artistic swings. Exactly. Damn. That's what I'm that's not what I want for You just got me fired her. up about a low hand revival. I like yeah, that. Yeah, no, and actually I was at the NAACP Image Awards last night. Yes. Oh, and yes, I sat I'm next to, to Jesse um from Parent Trap. Oh, cool! Yeah, so wow. a lot of low hands. Dude, you're pushing elbows, recently. dude. Yeah, we're pretty close. You're we're like very like close to meeting. Degree connection you're to pretty her. close to meeting Lohan. Uh, that's what I'm feeling. That would be a fire picture. That would be. So let's uh, a slight upset. Let's move Lohan on. I think we're in agreement yeah. there. Lohan's taking that first round matchup. Now, uh, this is a this is a typo. This is an autocorrect typo. I do know how to spell Lana Del Rey's <laughs> name, uh, but we okay, got we yeah. got Lana Del Rey and Judy Garland. Who I believe is Alice and or uh, Judy Garland or uh, what's the Wizard of Oz? I yeah, believe she she's plays the wizard. Dorothy. Dorothy. She That's plays the wizard. She <laughs> plays the titular Wizard <laughs> the of wizard Oz. Wizard that you never see. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, so we kind of a a newer, uh, more chic, uh, you know, um, cult favorite versus a a timeless icon. Yeah, I, this is see, this is tricky for me as well. I know there's gonna be some tough choices in here. Cause my grandma Huge. loved Dorothy. loved Dorothy. Yeah, was obsessed. Um, Do you like the Wizard of Oz? And honestly, I think it's like good. But recently, I've been reading what they were doing to Judy Garland on that set. Yeah, and it's horrific. Yeah, she was talented. She was just trying to like make her bag and like practice her <laughs> art, and they were just so horrible to her. And I think she was honestly like doing so well with what she was given yeah so like i do have a soft spot for her yeah lana del rey i feel like i've seen her get canceled come back and i'm hearing i'm I'm hearing closeted republican heavy which you know (laughs) how do people know that like like apparently she goes she hangs out at gun ranges a lot she's a big second amendment person this is all stuff that I read on Twitter. <laughs> right. But I'm know. like, this is also just a podcast. It's crazy. So it's not like I'm, <laughs> I have no real I know. power to cancel right. Del Rey and, right now. And, and it's not like, you know, 
Lana and the Lana stands care about what we think about Lana's. But it's interesting right. to note when, especially in a you know in a matchup with Judy Garland, America's sweetheart. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's what I'm, that's it's how uh, I feel. Yeah, yeah. It's like I can rely on Twitter for this, and I'm gonna say I don't like Republicans. I might go <laughs> Judy Garland. <laughs> oh, wow, that's awesome. Uh, Judy Garland, we're going with Judy Garland. Love it. Wow, a bit kind of. I thought that was a big upset. I kind of saw Lana Del Rey maybe making a Sweet Sixteen run, but you know, when you said Republican, I knew who it was. <laughs> I was just trying to get you on the same page. Uh, we don't uh, officially. The the show does not, you know. Um. <laughs> no, it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> it's making me laugh. All right, <laughs> we're still. We haven't even gotten to any fictional. Oh, I guess I guess Wendy. Well, Wendy's a real person. Raggedy, Raggedy Ann's Ann. fictional. Yeah. Uh, we there are some more fictional characters in here, and I think kind of, to me the ones that make me laugh are like fictional character versus real person. So yeah. I think we'll have some <laughs> okay. fun matchups. But for now, I like how you're implying like Sean White is like a fictional person <laughs> or something. Know, we're not there yet. Uh, me, but when I watch him do a 1080 on a snowboard, I think is that man even real? Is he real? Uh, we got Jessica Chastain and Sean White. Uh, are you a Chastain fan at all? Are you? I I do like her her work is always good yeah. like she's good did you see i never saw it zero dark 30 i haven't um it's been on my list for a while and i and i hear that's kind of her tour de force interesting maybe i'll have to watch it because i do like her we could but do yeah but sean white did so many fucking on. gold medals he's got the luscious locks he's got the swagger the beautiful girlfriend he's got the girl he's got i mean you wow. know women want him men want to be him everybody loves him yeah, I used to mix him up with Carrot Top. He's on here, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to come down to Sean White and Carrot Top, yeah, and I'm just going to be really confused. I don't know who's... <laughs> <laughs> um, Sean White, we're thinking, then? Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah, come on. Sorry, Jessica. Come on. Yeah, I mean, you, you've had a great season, Jessica, um, but this is the playoffs. All right, this is a fun one. Uh, we got the recent powerhouse, Ice Spice, going up against the OG lost boy, Peter Pan. I have a personal stake in this one. Wow. As my boyfriend mm -hmm. has mentioned oh, that yeah. Ice Spice is his celebrity yeah. crush. <laughs> I heard that. So Ice Spice and I are ops. We're gonna, um, <laughs> I'm going to bring that up when he comes on the show. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to have Ice Spice hour. Please do. And insert this clip of me being like really <laughs> mad about him saying that. Because like there's so many good options. And I'm like... The fact that he picked Ice Spice is crazy to me because I'm like, it's like, do you like gingers then? It's ginger. Her hair's your orange. Thing? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm sensing it's gonna be tough for Ice Spice to get out of this round. But I will say her music <laughs> is iconic. And yeah. like, as a person, I do really like her. She's and funny. honestly, is Peter Pan creepy? Like, or is Wendy um, creepy? Who did they say was creepy in Peter Pan? I think I've heard that Wendy is creepy because I, I believe Dolores Peter Pan can't age. So I think yes. technically, even though he's gaining years of experience, Wendy is actually maturing into a full adult and Peter is, is never really kind of getting past like that, whatever he is, so 11. So it's like four things. <laughs> it's giving four things. I think it is kind of like four things somehow. I couldn't tell you how, but I think <laughs> you're right. Um, okay. Honestly, I wish that Captain was Hook be... is, I think, the real metaphor for uh, pedophiles in that. Okay. Because he's trying to get all the boys. Oh. Okay. So now I've made this <laughs> even harder because at first it was Peter, Peter Pan's, Pan's a hero. <laughs> but I'm like, now he's a hero, but Ice Spice is Ice like... Spice is a modern legend. She's really... She's hot right now. Everyone's uh, she's talking She's not about that her. hot. Oh. Well, yes, uh, she's not hot. I, she's yeah, not hot. She's Her not music's hot. good. <laughs> you think Jamal's going to listen to this episode? Yes, shout out, Jamal, if you do listen to this. Thanks for listening to the show, man. We really appreciate that. And uh, and I have to put Ice Spice. And we're going to... Wow, or she moves up around. That's huge. Sorry, Peter Pan. Ice Spice moves on. I, I, I expected Ice Spice to go on a little run here. Yeah. Uh, next, we got Phineas from Phineas and Ferb. And right. Ron Weasley. I was debating putting Rupert Grint, and oh. uh, actually Tara talked me into putting uh, uh, Ron Weasley. We we think Weasley is probably you know more. Iconic. You're probably more inclined yeah. to vote for Weasley than Rupert Grint. Although yeah. I do think Rupert Grint is a hilarious name. It, it kind of is. <laughs> it it's sounds very, like a Harry Potter name. It does. It sounds very like <laughs> European. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I love that. 
I have to say I was a Ferb girl. Wow, nice. The strong, silent type. Yeah, I kind of yeah. like that. Um, <laughs> nice. So uh, Phineas is a bit much, honestly, sometimes. I did always relate to Phineas mm -hmm. um, naturally, but he, he is a little bit much sometimes. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I If you feel comfortable putting Ron forward, I think this is an easy one. Yeah, you know, Weasley the GOAT for sure. Um, yeah, Ron Weasley. He's moving on. Uh, a little bit. All right, we're getting into some some tough ones now. Uh, Ed Sheeran and Amy Adams. <laughs> I th Ed Sheeran is a more polarizing <laughs> figure than than I ever thought because I've always like I don't listen to him like he's not in my rotation. But like mm -hmm. every time I hear a Sheeran song, I'm like, that's Good. nice. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> fine. Like I like it. I guess he, uh, you know, I'm not. I don't follow the the pop culture gossip. I was being filled in by some of your roommates yesterday. On the Ellie Goulding saga. Oh my gosh! Wait, why did why were they filling you in on that? Well, they thought I should know, I guess. It's been like a really long. <laughs> it was St. Patty's Day, and we some Sheeran tracks got put on, and okay. very quickly it turned into Play Don't, and then Let Me Explain to You oh, what Don't is yeah. about. Yeah, with Niall and Goulding. Exactly. I'm sure everyone listening knows because apparently I was right. the last fucking idiot that didn't know <laughs> about the love triangle. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, th all that to say, I like Sheeran and I like Amy Adams a lot. You know. Uh, yeah. You know, every time I see an Adams flick, it's like, man, she she was really great every time she was on screen. She I does, yeah, bring my heart joy. Yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't seen Arrival though. Me either. Okay, good. We're on the same page there. Okay. Well, we got to make a decision though. Who are we, we taking? Do. Honestly, can I tell you? Uh, yeah. Don't let this influence your decision. I'm leaning Sheeran. I honestly was kind of gonna agree, just because like. When you think redhead, like Ed Sheeran is what comes to mind for a lot right. of people. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. If we're crowning the ultimate redhead, Ed right. Sheeran, like, yeah, like if you instantly conjure and, you know, I hate to say the word ginger, but when you think mm -hmm. that like Ed Sheeran <laughs> flashes through your mind right. a little and bit. It, it like hurts us and helps us at the same time. That's the only hesitation I have. But I do think yeah. like just with that being the baseline, we, it has to be him. Yeah, and I also, I saw a, uh, a an interview with Ed Sheeran. It was a Caleb Presley interview. Mm -hmm. And uh, he just came across as like a funny, down-to-earth guy, which I kind of wasn't expecting. I've I was heard he's really, like, he's just a good he guy. He seems like a good hang, you know, which yeah. I really appreciate about like an, an A-lister. Like, I feel like it's so easy to turn into, like, it, you can't even blame a lot of them for turning into. Well, that's the hot ones. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, that probably did help keep him grounded probably it's, it's really horrible but it's like you know when you're like in middle school you have to become funny, funny. <laughs> like yes sienna why do you think i'm doing this <laughs> no hunter you and ed sheeran are not the same i'm sorry to ed sheeran if you watch this ed he's gonna i love your music this. he's a great person ginger just isn't my thing yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Damn, that's that's fine. That's fair. That's more than fair. Next, this this matchup I'm really excited about. I manipulated the seating to get this first round matchup because mm -hmm. I just think it's hilarious. Uh, we have <laughs> one right. of the most revered artists of uh, centuries past, Vincent Van Gogh, the tortured mm -hmm. painter, and we have one of the most uh, you know influential and uh pioneering artists of our lifetime mm -hmm. uh conan o'brien who you know <laughs> changed the landscape of late night comedy and right you know has undoubtedly influenced legions of young comics across the country slash world but, but has he ever cut off his <laughs> ear <laughs> that's the for a woman now that's the thing and um no, he hasn't. He hasn't gone as far as to go to bottom. And I've actually heard that Vincent Van Gogh actually had a gay lover. I've heard he's actually not a good guy. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much that uh, matters years, I, years, years later. Right. But like, yeah, when we're it's Co Conan is like a. He good seems to be a good guy, guy. all around. We've never okay. had. We've never really had a bad story about Conan, as far as I'm aware. And he he's seems funny. to be. Yeah. <laughs> I I went to the. Uh, they did like a, a Vincent Van Gogh pop up mm -hmm. museum. That was like, yeah, projection. the immersive experience. Yeah. yeah. So I did a bunch of edibles and went to that. All right. And that was, I had a lot of fun. I really liked it. But, but it wasn't good enough to upset Conan, Conan O'Brien. In my heart, no, just because, you know, I feel for Van Gogh. I really do. He got the short end of the stick. He lived in a, a time mm -hmm. where allegedly he couldn't be accepted for who he was. And he dealt with some just unbelievable mental, like he was just yeah. in unbelievable mental, dire 
straights. Uh, and then, you know, you got Conan. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Van Gogh's gotten his praise. Sure. That, and that's, it's that's like, the thing, right? Calm, like, let's move We've on. given Van Gogh his flowers. Let's, let's fucking. Let's go, <laughs> let's go with Conan. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll move. Um, man, you, you nailed the, you hit the <laughs> nail on the head right there. This one, uh, I think will be a no brainer, but you know, the royal family's been in the news lately. They have been. Um, and I don't know, yeah. you you're kind you kind of are in you follow them a little bit, no? Yeah. You yeah, know yeah. you know I the mean, going I know songs. that Meghan Markle's location is. Is it Markle or is it Kate? We don't know where Kate, Kate is. Meghan's but fine. Meghan we're mad at. They're they're mad at. We're yeah. fine with Meghan. Well, they don't Prince, like Meghan. Okay, Prince Harry is with Meghan. Meghan, I think. Which is yes. honestly kind yes. of iconic. We love it's kind of cool. Couples, yeah, ginger. breaking the mold, just being like, you know what? I'm getting an American girl, an yep. American lass, and I'm saying fuck you to the to you monarch bastards. Like right. fuck you and guys. And that takes a lot. That does take a That's lot. That's huge. Um, so I do respect him for that. I think he's probably the most tolerable yeah, of like, the bunch. bloodline. Yes. I, I have to agree with you that that's outside of his red hair why he made the list. Right. And I think it's also like part of it is because he has red hair. I don't know if you've heard that like redheads are like really based. <laughs> I don't know. Also, Jamal, I, don't know. I don't know if I have heard that, but yeah, I believe it. Jamal has told me like that. Uh, he might just be telling me this because we're dating, but he, he did be, say nice that black people's favorite white people are gingers. Interesting. There's some kind of uh, what? What? Do you, why do you think that is? He. This is how he explained it. Yeah, in I, his I'm words. definitely gonna have to have him explain this. Yeah, have depth. him explain it as well. But yeah. I would say um, he said because we are the most oppressed of, of the, the white whites. people, That's like just by like v- like visibly. <laughs> Uh, yes. Okay. I totally see where he's coming from there. So that's what he said. But okay. But I Julia totally Roberts, see that. kind of goaded. Kind of goaded. So I'm gonna have to go with her just right. because he's a part. Prince Harry is yeah, just a part he's, of. Honestly, he's a, a big colonizer. Mess. Yeah. <laughs> All bit. right. Here we go. This is a fun one. Uh, <sighs> got Carrot Top. The, uh, you know, I guess pretty famous comedian of the '90s. I'm not really mm-hmm. sure what his act is like. Is he? I think he's kind of similar to Gallagher in that he. Does he kind of do messy? I think he like smashes fruit, maybe. I genuinely I he have does that kind no of shit. idea what Carrot Top does, but he's very nostalgic for me. Yeah. Because as a kid, my favorite vacation destination was Las Vegas. Um, and he wow, has he had a Vegas had a res- residency. Residency in Vegas. <laughs> Wait, so, so every you time went? I went, or you just saw him? No, I just saw the posters yeah. everywhere. Okay. And I was like, it's Sean White. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Olympics. It is, I, I loved. I was like, I love snowboarding. It's so cool. <laughs> that's that's awesome. And it just reminds me of my early days in Vegas, um, which were the best. I still love Vegas. It's a controversial Damn. opinion, but living Wait, four you, hours away now, okay. I want to I want to go every weekend. Wait, you you live there or you visited? You just visited? I just visited a lot. That's cool. Yeah, but I live four hours away now. Yeah, we should we go. Do, and we should go. Do you gamble? Um. I'm hesitant to gamble. Yeah. I'm I'm always like a penny slot person. Interesting. Low stakes, but still fun yeah. and exhilarating. You like getting the, the dopamine hit. Yeah, I that. actually got I won like forty bucks off of a two dollar nice. like slot machine, and Hell I was yeah. like, I cashed out and I left. Boom! That's buying dinner Boom. tomorrow. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. Yeah, dude, that's nice. So I do like gambling. Yeah. Um. Hell yeah. But I will say Elmo is like the. Okay. Iconic little red. Okay, yeah. Man. I was a little worried about putting Elmo on here, but I thought kind of he embodies right. what you would, you know, the ideals that you would want. Right. Of a red hair. No, I agree. I like Elmo. I would probably put Elmo forward just on yeah. the basis of I have no idea anything yeah, about I, Carrot Top except that I thought he was Sean White. Right. I know he was in some movies and I know he did, like, he he's a stand-up comic. I think he's like a prop comic. Anyways. <coughs> yeah. I just don't know. I'm not yeah. informed enough. Um, sorry, Carrot Top. Thanks sorry. for playing. Exactly. Uh, next, this is a fun one. David Bowie, <laughs> the star man, and Carl Weezer from Jimmy Neutron. Sort of a sort of having a resurgence as a as a very memeable character. He was a great he character is. originally. He is. He's very like likable and funny, yeah. but he's always like the butt of the joke. Yeah, and he is you know very much a stereotypical like nerd. He is like the stereotype of a middle school teacher. Yeah. So for that reason. For that reason, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. I think I think David Bowie. <laughs> and is Bowie. Too I mean, it's fucking Bowie. Yeah. We're not yeah. done talking about Bowie yet. Yeah. Um. All right. 
Queen Elizabeth the first, so like the 1500s Queen Elizabeth, that was very famous for her red hair. Mm-hmm. Um, and Jessica Rabbit. Did you ever see Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say <laughs> Jessica Rabbit. Right, she kind of has that iconic, like, you know, I feel like every year you see some Jessica Rabbit costumes on Halloween. Exactly, and they're always good. Yeah. And I don't yeah. think Queen Elizabeth no, no one's dressed was up politically as correct. That hag, yeah. Well, I'm sure she colonized and killed and murdered and... Right. You're out of here, Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, I'm like, just go around this one. All right, we're, let's get through the last of the first round. Um, Julianne Moore, mm-hmm. uh, a treasure. I'm a huge Julianne yep. Moore fan. Axl Rose, lead singer of Guns N' Roses. Um, He's you know, talented, but fun. apparently like horrible. We actually, the that house next to ours <gasps> is the Guns N' Roses house. That, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, they lived in my neighbor's house That's for a long time. That's very cool. That's a very fun piece of trivia. It is, but I'm going to have to go with Julianne Moore. <laughs> yeah, me too. I mean, I mean, Julianne Moore all the way. And yeah. God, I, I just imagine those dudes in their prime work. I've seen some photos because I like dug pretty <laughs> deep in the archives and it's crazy. Gnarly what stuff. What they did in that house. This is kind of a fun matchup. Recent Oscar Best Actress winner, Emma Stone, Mm -hmm. and uh, Natasha Lyonne, uh, who's having a very, I feel like, we're kind of a little bit coming on the downslope of her moment. I feel like, Mm -hmm. what what was the fucking show called? I'm blanking on it. She was in that big Netflix show that everyone loved. Anyways. I uh, did not see it. Yeah, I didn't either, but it was so big. We watched an episode in class. Stone. Emma Stone's kind of, of kind of, Emma Stone's kind of a powerhouse. Right, because I see Natasha tournament. Leon and I'm like, hmm, familiar, but like. Yeah. And then I see Emma Stone and I'm like, Emma Stone. Emma, it's Emma, yeah, you're right. Um, You watch The Curse? No. I got I know. I've seen, I've seen clips and yeah. it looks good. You know, it's fine. It is what it is, yeah. Uh, Lucille Ball. Mm-hmm. Classic. Very classic. Uh, and then, okay, so originally we had Kirsten Dunst in here. Mm-hmm. And then, similar to Scar jo, I don't think she's a natural redhead. No. I think she just got very famous as Mary Jane Watson. Correct. Which, who, is, who I realized I should have just made this MJ Watson because she's got to be one of the more famous redheads ever. Yeah. No, definitely. Um, <laughs> so, but, you know, fun matchup kind of, you know. This is fun because it's like I've never thought about these two people. <laughs> In the same yeah right context breath. ever. Yeah. <laughs> so you got I love Lucy and I do love Lucy, um, but I'm also a big Spider Man guy. I, I love like the Spider-Man. world and I love MJ. So I'm gonna have to defer to you here. <laughs> I I have to say like I love Lucy is just so iconic. Yeah. And MJ has had so many different variations, and I like a lot of them. Mm-hmm. If you were like rate the MJs, I might have a hard time. Yeah, I don't know if I could easily point to like one that was like wow, exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. I like I like Zendaya in the role. I as I well. think I honestly might like Zendaya a little more than Dunst as MJ. I think so too. I think we're gonna have to. I I'll say Lucy. We're going Lucy. I like that. I think uh, she she really. I mean, she deserves that. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what i'll say (laughs) um and then at the bottom so okay so i we didn't put hallie bailey in but but you know probably aria really at the uh, we'll talk about that we got to talk about that um but ariel Mm -hmm. our ariel Uh, ariel (laughs) shout out to ariel (laughs) shout out to a friend of the show ariel (laughs) Ariel the mermaid uh and so you know in by association hallie bailey um kind of you know that's huge, right? That's like right, and I do like <laughs> um, I love music, but I like really. I didn't even know she made music. I just really? I liked I liked Now You See Me a lot. Okay, yeah, <laughs> no, but her music's good too. It's good. She do um, like indie stuff. No, what she do? Is she scandalous. rock and roll? What she do? It, it's like honestly, like you know, like the two thousands, like hot girls, like you're tar- like man eater yeah. type stuff. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. it's c- more similar it's a to little that. pop punky. All right. That's cool. But I mean, it's not Ariel. No, it's not. Right. Ariel. And that's, and, and that's tough seating. You know, it, it, if you're going up against, two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 If you're going up against Ariel or fucking Wendy, like you're, it's tough. You're done. Um, all right. There's the first round. All right. We're going to move a little quicker now. We got it. Yeah. W- Wendy and Lindsay Lohan. You know, we love, you know, you look, there's going to be some upsets in here somewhere. Is it happening yet? Or is Wendy still coasting on that fucking 
national franchising power. I d- when you said national franchise, I was kind of like, oh, like corporate greed. I don't mm, like that. Okay. I don't, what do you think? You know, as much as I love Lindsay Lohan, I, I think she's made a statement already by having the comeback, by getting healthy, by getting into the tournament, by upsetting ScarJo in round one. And, you know, I think she's set for the future for next year's tournament. I imagine we'll see her for years to come. But, like, I, I don't know if this year they have the horses to, to beat Wendy quite I agree. yet. That's what my I heart see, says. I want to see a comeback story next yeah, year. Yeah, I agree. Let's go with um, Wendy. You know, you know, young team. They'll be back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Judy Garland, Sean White. Sean I, White. Yeah, that's, that's easy for me. Um, 24 to 8, easy. though. Yep. You know, shout out Kobe. <laughs> Ice Spice and Ron Weasley. Ron That's Weasley. That's kind of fun. Yeah. Wow. Come on. <laughs> Ice Spice got her win. Get her the yeah, fuck exactly. Out of here. I'm like, I'll give you that. I'll give you like second round. But. Uh I do think, you know, Ice Spice has to be here for a few more years before she can challenge sort of the same idea. Uh, yeah. Ron Weasley. Come on. That's Ron Weasley. Come on, yeah. Now this is a really tough one. Ed Sheeran Conan. This is hard because, like, more people know Ed Sheeran. Yeah. Like, Ed Sheeran is the redhead mm-hmm. of the moment, like, of now. Yeah. Um, but it was Conan. Arguably, before Sheeran, the redhead was Conan. Arguably, I think. Right. But are we back to the Van Gogh <laughs> theory of, like, <laughs> has he had his moment? Yeah. All right. So, damn. Damn. But I don't know. I don't know. Because mm. what's, re- what's he doing now? Is he still, is he, does he still have a show or did they? Conan's it? podcasting right now. <laughs> That's what we're doing. <laughs> and I'm sorry to say that. Is he washed if he's doing that? Um, you know, people have said it, but I, I think that reaction enough is probably as, as much as I was really, you know, Conan's my Michigan in this tournament. I was mm-hmm. really pulling for him. I do think Ed Sheeran probably, despite being a 13 seed, he's probably just like has the, the redhead. Just, I'd feel bad if I just didn't put him yeah, forward. I think you're right. Uh, Julia Roberts and Elmo. They've probably Julia Roberts probably did a Sesame Street episode before. You know, I'm gonna they, say they it's Julia Roberts then. Yeah, I mean, because I'm like Elmo's cool, but also we have no real women on this list. Yeah. Like we need <laughs> at least one existing woman. Um, yeah. and, and Elmo and doesn't have a chance against like like, like Sean yeah, White or yeah, something. Yeah, one C. Yeah, and Julia Roberts is like so much grace, so much class. I agree. Um, I, I like her a lot. Bowie and Jessica Rabbit. Probably Bowie. Sounds good. Jessica Rabbit, I'm like, she's hot. <laughs> yeah, but what? But I'm like, yeah. that's the only purpose what she kind of serves yeah. in the show, I yeah. think. Um, wow, this Ooh. is a t- this is a tough 7-10 matchup. Julianne Moore, Emma Stone. I mean, I mean, wow. Like, it's it's how do you even choose levels? What's your... And they're just so different as yeah. well. Like, yeah. they're, they're as actresses. Yeah, they're both so different. And they're both so, like, versatile. Exactly. So I'm trying to get my vape out of my pocket. <laughs> Don't, mom, mom, if you're watching, she's not watching. <laughs> uh, what are you thinking? Uh, I feel like, to me, Emma Stone I think is more a, us. I think it's Emma like Stone our generation. Right yeah. And it's, and it's, yeah, you know, it's and that the same nominations, thing. nominations, like she's, what things do we she so is well. And at the top, and I think she's going to keep going up a little bit I, before I we see a fall off. We love you, Julianne, but yeah. Emma, this she's round. Had her moment. All right, Lucille Ball and Ariel. Uh, Ariel. Yeah, I mean that's she's she's basically you know sleepwalking to the fucking final yeah. four. So what do we got? We got the elite eight now. All right, all right, here we go. I've got a huge soft spot for Sean White. I love I it. I just love snowboarding. I, I love, love the Winter it. Olympics, dude. I fucking I'm with you. And, and I and he's think, also unproblematic. Yeah, yeah, and especially for a guy that's been in the spotlight since he was 16, like mm-hmm. national spotlight to to remain. He's just cool, and uh, yeah. God, and he's going to upset Wendy, dude, finally. I was, it was time for Wendy to get out of here. Right. Uh, Weasley and Sheeran. Weasley. Yeah, wow. Because they're, they're, they both play the same figure. Yeah, they are kind of the same. <laughs> in, like, red-headed culture. Yeah. <laughs> and Re- Weasley's my preferred. You're right. Uh, this is a, damn, this is getting tight. Roberts, Julia Roberts, and David Bowie. I'm going to say Julia Roberts. All right. I like Bowie. I like Bowie's music. But no, like, Roberts was a three seed for a reason. Like exactly, you see Julia Roberts, you're like, oh, she's the best. Right, right, right. Well, another tough one: Emma Stone and Ariel. Wow, that would have been interesting casting, right? Yeah, mm. I I can't even imagine what the movie would have been. 
Did you see the live action Little Mermaid? No, I was kind of salty that it wasn't like a. Ch- I wanted like a real bloodline ginger. <laughs> a real pale. <laughs> yeah, but they do. They do have like this theory, like in Disney, that they're just like replacing all of the like yeah. true gingers. Yeah. Um, as yeah. like they're like making them all like people of color yeah. now, yeah, which is totally fine. Like I want more representation, but rep- why not just why make they pick more people it, of color it, it, it like is, roles? Yeah, that first them. off, make obviously that's the answer. Make original stories with people of color, right. and it's also weird that like a lot of the ones being replaced are the redheaded characters. They like, all are. <laughs> I saw a list. There's like twenty of them already. <laughs> it's like MJ from Spider Man. Yeah. It's you know it's it's it Eric cracks from me Little up. Mermaid. It's like, like it's well, so no many. one's gonna miss the ginger. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. I'm like, okay. Um, honestly, dude, what do you think here? I'm I'm kind of thinking stone. That's what I was going to say. I'm kind of thinking stone, I was kind of thinking that, yeah. Wow, that's some major Cinderella story upsets as the top two C's go down. Wendy and Ariel are out. We're in the final four, and We're what a oh. final four it is. Oh, my Let's start God. with our top game. Uh, Sean White, Ron Weasley. <laughs> Sick. This is hard because they, they do sick. not play the same role. No, like, Sean is very much an alpha. He he makes <laughs> top gingers. Dog. He did us like a great service by just yeah. making us like cool. Yeah, yeah, and chill damn, and like yeah. laid back. Damn. And like Ron Weasley's like everyone loves him, but yeah. it's like endearing. Yeah. And Sean White's just so epic. Yeah, we got we, we gotta got to send him. Sean to the ch- to the championship. I love it. We got uh him. and Ron had a good you know, final four run for Weasley. That's the Weasley family will be really happy with that. Yeah, I think. and I, I love the Weasleys. Yeah. Uh all right, here we go. Julia Roberts, Emma Stone, sort of uh mm. a passing of the torch, so to speak. And that's what I think it is. I think, wow. I think Emma Stone's wow. up and coming, like Wow, yeah. I, I mean, it's her moment. She is she is killing everything. Okay, we have set ourselves up. This is it, guys. This is the Hunter Davidson Radio Hour. Red Hat Rampage National Championship. The crowd's hype. It's Sean White versus Emma Stone. And what are we thinking? We got the, I think, the most decorated Winter Olympian of all time. Uh, versus, uh, you know, a very decorated actor and, you know, probably, I would, would you say probably the most, you know, one of the most famous movie stars in the world right now? That's probably not off base, right? She's an A-lister. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. It's off-base. tough, dude. What do you, what it's do you. It's just two different worlds. I know. I like, know. this is a great final too, because it's yeah. just, they're so different. Yeah. That like. I yeah. wouldn't be upset either way. We got it's like it's it's like when you yeah you got an elite offense versus an elite defense in the championship. Mm-hmm. You know exactly. it's nice to see. Um, <laughs> who are we gonna give it to? Who are we going to crown as the champion? I might give it to Sean. White. Oh, let's I go! I just think he's so cool. Like I owe him my life for yeah. making Redhead so to cool. To be like, again. I can be chill. Exactly. I like, don't have chill. to be student council president. Exactly. Workaholic. Like he made me want to snowboard. Yeah, that's badass. And like I can't afford snowboarding right now, yeah. but when I can, like, I'll be doing it for Sean. I'll be doing it for <laughs> Sean. And he has a beautiful girlfriend now. He's like on TikTok <laughs> doing things. I'm just like. Like, how do you pull yeah. Nina from... Wait, he pulled who? He's dating Nina um, uh, Dobre. Oh, wait. Like Dobrev? Da- Dobrev, yeah. Yeah, hold on. They're, like, dating. Nina Dobrev. Sean White. <sighs> Very seriously. Like, they've been dating for a while. Oh, relationship timeline. Since 2020, it's getting serious. Where's the ring? From a South African safari to the Olympics. Oh, that's cute. Right? That's really cute. Um, all right. <laughs> all right. All right. We got to get off it. Um, <laughs> but he, w- he he's, I think he's, I think he's got to be our champ. And, it, you know, tough field, but only one can come out. And there it is, guys. You can see it on the screen. The eight seed in the tournament, Sean White, has won Redhead Rampage. Oh, I should have queued up one shining moment. <laughs> that's fine. Um... Well, there it is, Sienna. Thank you for playing. Thank you for for mm. coming up with this. <laughs> this is crazy. Did you like it? It was kind of fun. I did. It I hope my people aren't mad at me. For picking Sean White? No, just for like 
picking gingers. I'm ah, like, you know, I, 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 I had that worry, but I think you know, it's hard to rank them. Everyone's great yeah. on the list. I love them all. That's and that that's the that's and that's what it's all about. You know, everybody, just like every team that gets into the big dance, mm-hmm. had a great season and is a good basketball team. Every exactly. every member on in that tournament like is a great person that we love and we root for. Except exactly. for arguably Queen Elizabeth the first, we don't uh, really we can't we can't coastline on and her. um Lana Del Rey <laughs> yeah <laughs> and and maybe Lana Del Rey but don't let Banas hear us say that <laughs> uh, um Sienna uh we're at an hour fourteen but I do want to hear about the Image Awards Image Awards they how did it come crazy. about yeah there's this amazing website I will do shameless prom not on um whatever i'm gonna promo them you're gonna plug it yeah. i'm gonna plug oh, yeah. it it's called seatfillers.com Damn. and they basically fill seats for all of the major award shows oh, so when whoa, you see cool. when you see a celebrity get up and accept their award their seat is then empty as right. they like go backstage do interviews like yeah pictures yeah the whole nine yards yeah. yeah so after they win they're they're gone and there's like empty seats in the theater whatever like people who said they were gonna come couldn't so they need people there to be like actors cool. in the seats that are open so they look like a fully yeah like a full house like, yeah like they didn't like it's like nobody like it's so it doesn't look like nobody showed up for the exactly. show exactly yeah damn so that's they, a fun look behind the curtain yeah it's, it's really really cool because it's honestly like a production they're like okay we're 30 minutes till air yeah. everyone like find your seat shift Marks. around yeah. exactly that's like sick. people are like grabbing you from there and telling you to sit here and it's just like very active it's a very active process and we like I got selected and I, I had no idea what to expect. Um, and this was for the NAACP image Awards. Did you have to put in the headshot? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You do some in a headshot. Okay. Um, and I, I was really excited because I'm dating Jamal. Yeah. Um, a black man. And for the first time ever, he had Saturday plans. <laughs> <laughs> he had to miss the, <laughs> Oh wait, that's the wrong sound effect. We got to play. Uh, uh, oh. oh, I, of course, asked my other ginger friend, uh, Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that's awesome. I just think that's awesome. Sorry, continue. No, no, no. I, it, it deserves applause because it it was a crazy thing to pull up with <laughs> two redheads um, the as a group awards. two redheads for the NAACP Image Awards. And you guys look sharp. You look nice. We saw you, you in your black tie outfits. It was nice, but I would say, I don't know if everyone felt the same because we did roll up and everyone was looking at us like we yeah. were crazy. They're like, what are you doing they, they're here? like how like how like who, right. who do you know here <laughs> exactly and like what's You're here crazy, to support someone. Yeah, and what's, what's crazy to me is that we roll up and Jamal always likes to make jokes when I'm the minority. So, of course, he's texting me. He's like, how do you feel now being the minority? Like, how do you like it? How do you like it? And I'm like, stop. <laughs> like, I'm trying to be, like, stop. cool and chill I'm right trying now. to be normal. I know. And then he's, like, rubbing it in my face. But it was honestly, like, crazy. And it felt like just, like, the most for the yeah. plot thing I've done in a yeah. while. Yeah, I mean, pretty cool. When I got the right. text, you are like... Because we were, we were going to record this episode yesterday. Mm-hmm. And you said... Hey, quick change of plans. Uh, I got invited to the NAACP <laughs> Image Awards, and I was, and you were like, "I hope that's not okay." And I was like, "Obviously, I have so many questions, right?" But of course, go because that's awesome. It Sick. was awesome. I we at first we were like in the back and. We were like, you know, this is okay. Like, because there were so many, right. like, black seat fillers. Yeah. We were like, this is their moment. Yeah. You know, like, we'll, we'll let them the go see their bleeds. icons. Yeah. Like, we'll just, we'll fill we're the seats in the back. We're happy to be here. We're happy to support in any way we can. And and we were. But yeah. then, <laughs> th- this lady comes up, and she's like, you two, come. Uh-huh. And Lucas and I were like, oh, okay, okay. And we get up, and we start walking. And this lady puts us right behind Usher. <laughs> <laughs> Super Bowl halftime performing Usher, the Usher. We, I literally, if I went like this, you're touching like, Usher. I'm touching Usher, <laughs> and we look to our right. Abbott Elementary, the whole cast. Whoa, we're awesome. in the same row. Awesome. We, we actually found out that we were seat filling for Quinta Brunson oh, after she won. Man, so I kept her seat warm. Wow. Um, in the second row of the That's Image Awards. So sick. She's the absolute best. Yes. No. Everyone there was so iconic. I. Talked, I like waved at Kiki Palmer. She nice. was so sweet. She waved back. 
Um, we saw Halle Bailey, nice. and she was gorgeous. Um, new new edition was there, wow, which is cool. cool yeah. um, Andrea Day, the girl who sings like Rise Up, did a performance. <gasps> okay. Oprah was there, Classic. just like announcing yeah. Usher's award. Wow. Um, he won a few. Damn, he uh, he had a big year, I guess. Did he, he did, which I didn't know he had a big year, but was it? It was just the the Vegas residency in the Super Bowl. Like, was there a new album? I think so because okay. like Lucas knew of it. Okay. Yeah, but honestly, it was it was a crazy environment, and like yeah, the MC between like commercial breaks was always like for your black card, do this. Like if you have the black card, do this. And Lucas and I were just sitting there and like just like a chorus of people from all around us just singing these songs that we had never heard. <laughs> That's so awesome to me. It I was because so we were funny. like, we were like, we don't have the black card. We'll just sit here nicely. And we'll just sit here nicely and be supportive. They're and very clap. good. It's a very good song. Yes. They're and they're also singing it very well. Exactly. Everyone was so right. talented. It's the they most were... talented people in the world in one room. Exactly. <laughs> and, but I, of course, don't know everything they know because... <laughs> Because it's, just, it's not Harper Creek my culture. Yeah, it's right. it's Harper Creek, and you know Jamal taught me a lot. So shout out to him. Um, he prepared me. Uh, well, oh. yeah. I didn't. I didn't want to cut you off. Um, that's awesome, dude. And then yeah, it it's awesome. Got there, came back, got into your green, so you didn't get pinched. You can't exactly. get pinched. Exactly. Can't dude. get pinched. I almost wore a green dress, but I was like, that's overkill. A little much, you thought? Yeah, I think it would definitely be like, <laughs> okay, leprechaun. We get it. Like, what if I did the leprechaun? <laughs> oh. But really cool. Definitely, if you're in LA and watching this, or New York, I think they have it there too. Seafillers.com. Yeah, wait, Crazy no. Crazy experience. Real. I'm going to, man, I, when you told me about the what, because I think I heard you talking about it yesterday, mm -hmm. my first thought was definitely want to some of my headshot maybe do it but my second thought was like you know i can handle rejection from all these jobs mm -hmm. just based on like you don't have the experience we're looking for or this or that whatever but it would be pretty tough for them to just <laughs> <laughs> look at a headshot and be like, no fucking way. <laughs> we can't <Absolutely>. okay <laughs> this guy can't even be in the background <laughs> they 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 rejected me for a great deal of shows okay. too, which is why I was very surprised when I <laughs> that this one they accepted when you. I they accepted me for this one. Um, oh man! I was also confused too because all of the seat fillers were black. I think maybe it was like a five percent of the uh -huh. there were probably like a hundred seat fillers. Yeah. maybe like five of us were white. Wow! And I was wow. like, and I brought one of them. So like of the approved yeah, one of them was a plus one. I was like one. one of like three white. Wait, seat so fillers. did they just give you a plus one? You could bring anybody. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yep. They do. So and so if you ever want to be a plus one, I can let yeah. you know when I get yeah. invited so back. Maybe the better strategy for me is to get someone whose headshot I feel more confident in getting <laughs> selected. Try to be friends with them. Get invited. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, really, truly a great experience. So many talented people yeah, in one I mean, room. What a cool, just, yeah, the energy and in there must yeah. have just been unreal. Because you're, you're in the room with them in a different way than like a concert or a meet yeah. and greet. Because it feels like you're on the same playing field. Right. Like where I could just walk up to a celebrity and be like, congratulations, like like your work is amazing right. and they would be like thank you and like engage in a conversation whereas like if i saw him on the street it's like you're very much so like a doting fan yeah right. and it that, wasn't that's like cool. that you, you were in the yeah that's interesting if, you it felt like arena. i made it exactly yeah. it felt yeah. like i was in the arena <laughs> and i didn't deserve that that's the seatfillers.com <laughs> and com. that's an ad for seatfillers.com they launched my career <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. awesome dude that's really cool um is there anything else you want to... We're at a, we're at about an hour and a half here. I feel like we've That's, done a uh, great podcast. I don't even know what else I could talk about. Yeah, this is my like whole life story. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm sure there's more we could, but, you know, that's why you always have the open invite to come back on the show. Yeah, no, this was amazing. So <sighs> truly, like, thanks for having oh, me on. This was thanks super Thanks for fun. coming on. It was my pleasure. Uh, we got a fun... We got Jeevan and we got Jamal. Mm -hmm. And then we got uh, some more. We got, I think we're going to bring Jake back on for a special. I think I'm going to okay. do some. I think that's going to be a whole episode of the great pre-produced segments that you just saw. <laughs> I think I'm going to make Jake read some stuff and do some stuff. And it'll He's be fun. Hilarious. I think it'll be fun. His and, voiceover um, stuff. Crazy. His impressions are ridiculous. So I got I got a lot of ideas. We've gotten uh, the show's been growing in the week that we took off. A few clips have uh you know not gone viral but gotten out of the circle we're seeing the audience grow a little bit that's nice Love guys it. thank you if you're a new listener for listening and uh it's good to be back and uh we'll see you uh next time and thank you to sienna